Hey guys, Mr. Sarabian again. Now, before we actually move ahead to the next video that I was planning for you guys, I figured I'd actually take a second to stop for a second. Because I know in the very first video that I sent to you, I threw a lot of information and a lot of terms and a lot of things all at once. So what I want to do is I actually want to take a second to do sort of a, a follow-up video to the first videos. I kind of call this Building Ecosystems 1.5 with Mr. Sarabian, so to speak. Basically covering, once again, what, what I was trying to say to you guys in the beginning, talking about the energy pyramid, trophic levels, and your place in the food chain. So what does all that mean, and what were all those words that I threw at you? Well, what I decided to do is I decided to change up the angles a little bit and actually go at it one more time and just give you guys a little bit more clarification on things. Now, as we addressed in the previous videos, all energy starts off with the sun. The energy is, that's coming from the sun is the main source of energy for everything on Earth. Using its heat and using its light, everything around us is able to perform a certain job. Now, what are those jobs? Well, first you have to remember that something needs to convert that energy into something that we, as living things, can use. That falls to these guys, the plants, a.k.a. the producers. Now, all that producer simply means is you're an organism that's able to utilize that energy from the sun to make food for yourself. So they use a process that we call photosynthesis. Essentially, the organelles that are inside of their cells, specifically chloroplasts that are made of a special green pigment called chlorophyll, can convert that energy from the sun into all kinds of other food that they need. Things like glucose and starches, the basic sugars and the basic carbohydrates for all animals to consume. Now, here's the problem. Not all animals on this earth can consume plants. And unfortunately, because of that, you need something before that. You need something that can eat plants, a.k.a. plant eaters. Now, as I brought up in my previous video, I introduced to you some plant eaters, a.k.a. primary consumers. Consumers basically meaning that they actually have to eat in order to get the energy that they need. So they actually have to chew their food like you and I can especially at a restaurant or something. They can move their jaws up and down and they can eat the plants directly. Now, the good news is that there are lots of different types of primary consumers or plant eaters out there. That's the other reason why I incorporated not one, but two different plant eaters. I have the Triceratops here and I have the Pachycephalosaurs here. This is a great cross section of two great sets of herbivores that are directly consuming the producers, AKA the plants. So these are known as primary consumers and they are herbivores. Now we can start getting to some of the other creatures and some of the things that can therefore eat the primary consumers. We call these guys the secondary consumers. Now, if you're a secondary consumer, that means that you eat the primary consumers, AKA meat eaters. So that's why I have here the raptors. Now you can call them the dromaeosaurs, you can call them the Utah raptors, but one way or the other, these are known as secondary consumers. And the reason why they're secondary consumers is that they only eat the primary consumers. That's all that they can do. They can't go after the plants because their teeth are simply not adapted for that. So that's the reason why these raptors are known as the secondary consumers. Now, here's the deal though. These are relatively small predators. They are hunters, but they're relatively small. So they can only go after basically a limited food supply. That's a little bit different for the final group of consumers. So I really I shouldn't call them final. I should call them the top consumers in any sort of food chain. And those are the tertiary consumers, which were, of course, as I introduced to you previously, the T-Rex and his family. Now, Tyranny Tyrannosaurus rexes were very much the tertiary consumers in their food chains because they could eat pretty much anything in terms of the animals that are around. They can eat the Triceratopses. They can eat the Pachycephalosauruses. Heck, they can even eat the raptors if they want to. So because of that, they have to be the top level consumers in this ecosystem. 
But I also failed to neglect, and I also failed to tell you that food chains and food webs don't just stop at plant eaters and meat eaters. There are tons of other creatures that are out there too that can eat lots of different types of foods that aren't necessarily mentioned. Guys like these. These are known as baryonyx, okay? A special dinosaur that actually specialized in eating fish. So these guys are actually a different group of eaters. They're still technically secondary consumers, because they eat quote unquote meat, but they are fish eaters. So we actually have a different term for these guys, pishkivores. And pishkivore is simply a fancy word that means you eat fish. There are also other kinds of eaters that are out there, omnivores. Omnivores pretty much eat everything. So they can eat plants, they can eat animals, they can eat fish, they can eat pretty much anything, i.e. us. We are omnivores. There are also insectivores, detritivores, and all kinds of other vores that are out there. Now, what does all this exactly mean in terms of an energy pyramid, which is what I was telling you guys about before? Well, let's change our views for a second. So, ladies and gentlemen, officially, welcome to the most awkward section of a video that I've ever shot before. So uh, let's take a closer look at what's going on here. First of all, as I mentioned before, the sun is shining its light and its heat down onto our planet, specifically shining its light onto the producers. This is officially the first trophic level of the energy pyramid. And the reason why it is so large and so much bigger is because this is the direct source of all of the other food for all of the other creatures. In other words, without this level, there cannot be anything else above it. So without the plants, no plant eaters. Without the plant eaters, no meat eaters. So that's why it's so important that the energy level at the base of the energy pyramid must be the biggest. And if you notice, as we go above, as I mentioned before, we have our primary consumers, aka the plant eaters, the triceratopses and the pachycephalosauruses. Now, two things I want you to notice. Number one, there are more pachycephalosauruses than there are triceratopses. Part of the reason for that is because smaller plant eaters and can be in a much higher supply higher supply because they need less space in their ecosystems. So because of that, you need to have more small herbivores than big herbivores. That's the first thing I want you to notice. Second thing I want you to notice is the fact that as you've traveled up to the second trophic level, you've lost some energy along the way. How has that energy gotten lost? Well, think of it this way. In order for a plant eater to get the food that it needs, it needs to walk. That walking takes up energy. Not only do they have to walk, they also have to chew their food. So because they have to chew their food, that also uses up energy. So that's the reason why this level of the energy pyramid, the second level of the energy pyramid, the primary consumers, is a much smaller level than the producers. The producers don't have to do a thing. They literally just have to sit and take in sunlight and they can grow, they can reproduce, and they can produce food for themselves. That's the reason why the producers are so much larger and so much more abundant than the primary consumers. So that is the next level of the energy pyramid, the primary consumers. Sitting above that, you then have your secondary consumers, the raptors and the baryonyxes. These guys are the ones that feed directly on the plant eaters. Now, as I mentioned before, you have your baryonyxes that are pishkivores. They eat fish. Where do they get their food from? Producers as well. In most cases, it's going to be things like algae or phytoplankton, but either way, those fish eat plants. So because those fish eat plants, they then become food for the secondary consumers, the baryonyxes. And then finally, after the secondary consumers, you then have the very, very tippy top, the top level consumer, the tertiary consumers, the top predators, AKA the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And the Tyrannosaurus Rex is most definitely the tertiary consumer because they can eat the raptors, the baryonyxes, and all the other plant eaters that are present. Now, one thing I want you to notice, secondary consumers 
and tertiary consumers, their energy levels have also gotten smaller. Why is that? Well, these guys have to exert a lot more energy in order to get the food sources that they need. They actually have to hunt. They got to figure out where their food is. They got to search for it. They got to chase after it. Then they got to kill it. And then they got to eat it. That takes a lot of energy. So that's the reason why these guys have very little energy at their disposal, because they have to use so much of it. And this is the reason why it's the energy pyramid. As you go up the pyramid, the amount of energy that is available gets lower. The producers, they got all the energy because all they have to do is sit and wait for the sun to shine its light on them. The primary consumers, all they have to do is walk and eat. No hunting that's involved whatsoever. They are the herbivores, but they are also prey. They are food sources for the secondary consumers who then have to hunt and kill the primary consumers. And then finally, you have at the very top, the lowest amount of energy at their disposal, but the top predator, the top dog, Tyrannosaurus rex, aka the tertiary consumer, the top predator. He can feel free to be a predator and kill anything that he wants to kill, or he can be a scavenger and pick off dead things. Now, I'm going to save the T-Rex predator scavenger debate for a later time, but this is essentially how a energy pyramid works. And this is what I was trying to explain to you guys before, but I think this kind of lays it out just a little bit better. But now it all makes sense. So stay tuned for my next video where I not only cover space, but I also cover diseases and invasive species. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe.